Hey everybody, so this is just going to be a quick, easy lesson. Uh, I know if you're sick at home, you don't want to be sitting through a lot of lectures, so here we go. This is going to be short and fast, I promise. Uh, Meditation 17 by John Dunn. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that Latin, but in essence it says, Now this bell tolling softly for another says to me, Thou must die. Other, other, otherwise, it's saying once that bell tolls, it's your time to go. Uh, so in class, I'd have you talk about these pictures with people around you, but obviously you can't do that. So just pause the video, think about the pictures, think about what you see. Um, background, Meditation 17, uh, Dunn's most famous pe work of prose. Uh, we get some famous lines, they're not word for word, but they're included. Uh, for whom the bell tolls, it's a song, um, you see it in a lot of literature, and then you get No Man is an Island, it's a kind of a work, it's kind of a poem. And it's located in this text, so it's amazing. Um, then in class, I'd ask you what all do you remember remember about Dunn, uh, what he did in his life, things like that. So just think back on that. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, let me hide my webcam. So perchance he for whom this bell tolls may be so ill that as that he knows not it tolls for him, and perchance I may think myself so much better than I am as that they who are about me and see my state may have caused it to toll for me, and I know not that. The church is Catholic, universal, so are all her actions. All that she does belongs to all when she baptizes a child. That action concerns me, for that child is thereby connected to that head, which is my head too, and engraft into that body, whereof I am a member. And when she buries a man, the, that action concerns me. All mankind is of one author and is of one volume. And when one man dies, one chapter is not torn out of the book, but translated into a better language. And every chapter must be tr so translated. God employs several translators. Some pieces are translated by age, some by sickness, some by war, some by justice. But God's hand is in every translation. And his hand shall bind up all our scattered leaves again for that library where every book shall lie open to one another. As therefore the bell that rings to a sermon calls not upon the preacher only, but upon the congregation to come. So this bell calls us all. But how much more me, who am brought so near the door by this sickness? There was a contention as far as a suit in which piety and dignity, religion and estimation were mingled which of the religious orders should bring to prayers first in the morning. And it was determined that they should ring first that rose earliest. If we understand aright the dignity of this bell that tolls for our evening prayer, we would be glad to make it ours by rising early in the application that it might be ours as well as his, whose indeed it is. The bell doth toll for him that thinks it doth. And though it intermit again, yet from that minute that that occasion wrought upon him, he is united to God, who casts not up his eye to the sun when it rises, but who takes off his eye from a comet when that breaks out, who bends not his ear to any bell which upon any occasion rings, but who can remove it from that bell which is passing a piece of himself out of this world. No man is an island. So this is where we get that. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Neither can we call this a begging of misery, or a borrowing of misery, as though we were not miserable enough of ourselves, but must fetch, and more from the next house, in taking upon us the misery of our neighbors. Truly, it were an excusable covetousness if we did, for affliction is a treasure, and scarce any man hath enough of it. No man hath a, a fishion enough that is not matured, ripened by it, and made fit for God uh, by that affliction. Uh, if a man carries treasure in bullion or in a wedge of gold, and have none coined into current monies, 
His treasure will not defray him as he travels. Tribulation is treasure in the nature of it, but it is not current money in the use of it. Except we get nearer and nearer our home heaven by it, another may be sick too. And sick to death, and this affliction may lie in his bowels as gold in a mine, and be of no use to him. But this bell that tells me of his affliction digs out, and applies that gold to me. If by this consideration of another man's danger, I make mine own into com contemplation, and so secure myself by making my recourse to God, who is our only security. So um, in class, I'd be like, what is this text saying? I just want you to think about it, talk about it with a partner get what's going on. So take some time, think about it. Because our journal prompt, we're having an extended writing entry. It's on Google Classroom. It's due Monday at 8 a.m. So you have a few days to even do it. Um, your job is following. Simply write about your takeaways from this text. Just tell me what this text is saying. And the text is found on Google. So you can actually go look at it again. All right, that's all I got for you. Hope you get to feeling better if you're sick. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.